rather than finding out later when we've done <laughs> extensive programming uh, efforts uh, to, to accomplish the same thing and find that there's a, a problem comes up. Schulenberger expects his first air traffic alert system to be on the market within two years. In Burlingame, California, for the Computer Chronicles, I'm Wendy Woods. Joining us in the studio now is Rich Bader. Rich is general manager of Intel's PC Enhancement Operation, and they're based in Hillsboro, Oregon. You know, Stuart, uh, Intel's had a lot of success with the 386 processor, mm -hmm. clearly. And uh, one of the nice things about this board, I understand, is it's a, a thousand dollar or less uh, add-on to your PC XT or whatever it is to make it into a 386 yeah. plus a megabyte of memory. And so that's a pretty cost-effective uh, way to go, it sounds like. So instead of buying a 386, you can buy the board and your machine runs like a 386. Absolutely right. And what allows you to do that is a host of technology, uh, 16 megahertz, 3D6 microprocessor, socket for the 3D7 math coprocessor for doing math intensive applications. As we said, a megabyte of 32-bit DRAM, an optional capability for an additional two meg. So mm -hmm. you can put up to three meg really in your, in your old PC or XT. And in addition to all of the uh, logic that comes on the board, we also provide uh, a, a bunch of software utilities that come with it that do EGA caching, disk caching, uh, provide expanded memory capability, Lotus Intel Microsoft mm -hmm. expanded memory. So it's really a complete upgrade, not only CPU performance, but disk uh, display and memory. Are there any incompatibilities that you know of that, as far as uh, the hardware is concerned? Things we, people should watch out for? We did a tremendous amount of compatibility testing and all the known DOS software that we've been able to get our hands on runs just okay. great on the Can board. Can you show us how this works? Give sure. Us a, it gives some time comparisons and so on. Well, uh, some off-quoted uh, numbers. Norton's SI is an example, 15.3 for what that's net mm -hmm. worth. Uh, well, I think you have some demos here, don't you? Just show yeah. Let's show us from a typical yeah. user's point of view how things would run faster using that board. Sure. Uh, if you just do a dir, take a directory of the machine, this is what the machine looks like running at XT speeds. Okay. And from the keyboard, I can control the speed and you can see that the mm -hmm. DUR is dramatically faster. Okay. Now, you wouldn't spend 9.95 just to make <laughs> your DUR go, right. but certainly if we take a look at, uh, at a different application such as AutoCAD, engineers are very excited about the performance of the 3D6 and the 387. And again, here's what the performance of it looks like in slow mode. Now, this is what an XT would do, but the 3D7 math coprocessor is making things go a little faster mm -hmm. than you might be used to. Mm -hmm. It takes about 10 seconds to redraw the spaceship Columbia like that. If, however, we now switch into the high-speed mode and do it again, you can see that there's a mm -hmm. dramatic performance improvement. Right. Makes it usable, very usable for CAD. You bet. Mm -hmm. Not just for engineers. We also have, as an example, Lotus 123. Here we have a spreadsheet that has about 2,000 random numbers that we generate. And in slow mode, it takes about 10 seconds for the spreadsheet to recalc. You can see the weight flag going mm -hmm. on up there in the corner. After we generate all the numbers, we add them all across all the rows and across all the columns. There you go. And at high speed, you can see it's significantly mm -hmm. faster, about mm -hmm. two seconds for that case. Uh, the other example I have is many people think that for power uses of um, CAD packages and spreadsheets, you'd use it. But another interesting uh, case is simply for word processing. And here we have uh, Microsoft Word version 4 with a typical document up. And we uh, will just scroll through the document. Here I'm hitting page down. And you can see that the screens come up rather quickly. But nonetheless, when we go to high speed mode, mm. it's as quick as I can hit the key. So we believe that the 3 to 6 really has some performance improvement for just about all PC users. Mm -hmm. Now, what's Intel coming up with as far as new add-on boards? Oh, <laughs> you can certainly expect us to see us continue to come out with uh, new product lines. In fact, there'll be some uh, products in the communications, PC communications mm -hmm. area that we'll be uh, introducing in the not-too-distant future. Mm -hmm. Rich, thank you very much. In just a minute, we'll take a look at an add-on board that turns your PC into a fax machine. So stay tuned. Joining us in the studio now is Jan Ozer. Jan is general manager of the fax division at Quadrum, and they're based in Norcross, Georgia. 
Stuart, you know, facsimile transmissions are becoming more and more a part of our lives. Sure you know, are. Every day, put a sheet of paper in the machine and send it over a telephone line. It's one line of those things, it. how did I get along without one? Exactly, yeah. Now, this is kind of an interesting board because it makes your personal computer into something different from a computer. It's a, it's really makes it a fax machine, I guess, and a whole lot more. How does it, Jan, how does this make, the, how is this different from a fax machine when you put this in your PC? Well, it saves you a lot of time, Gary. Uh, most of the documents that are being sent today over traditional faxes are, are created in the computer. Rather than printing it out and walking it down to the fax machine, you can send it directly from your PC. It saves a lot of time and you get a, a clearer result at the other end. Let's get going here and send a fax now. We have another setup over there. There's a real fax machine on the other part of the set there. And I want you to send uh, something over to that machine. Let's see how this all works. I'm naming the file to be sent, um, and then searching for the phone. All we have is the uh, the San Mateo College number in here, uh, but you can load as many numbers as you can fit in the directory. Mm -hmm. It's, it's uh, storage bound, not program bound. Press enter, and then we want to transmit it immediately. Okay. So there's only two or three commands that you need to go through uh, in order to send a fax from the PC. So this this program is a term and state res resident program, then as it pops up when you. That's correct. Uh, like Sidekick okay. or some other programs. Right. Okay. So again, you were in the middle of a, a word perfect document here. That's you correct. said send a fax, so you just called up uh, the fax function here, mm -hmm. and it just called the other fax machine, which is over there on the other side of our studio, and it's sending it the fax. One of the, one of the things that we wanted, uh, we felt it was necessary to accomplish with this program was to make it easy to use. Therefore, it's compatible with most word processing programs, and in fact, can, can uh, change word processing programs into fax files automatically. Uh, it, uh, what you saw me do is all you need to, to do in order to send a fax from any mm -hmm. uh, word processing file. Now, it's a basic technology. We're dealing with uh, Group 3, is it? That's group correct. Three and and uh, also the, the data rate is what? Uh, data rate on this particular product is 4,800 baht. Uh, okay. the, the price of this is 395, which is the lowest price fax board on the market mm -hmm. by, uh, against 9,600 baht yeah. models by about $600. And then what is the average transmission time then for, uh, for a 4,800 baht? Piece of paper. Um, for, a <laughs> for a page of uh, text, it takes about a minute. Uh -huh. Okay, Jen, just so we notice, there's the fax coming out of a fax machine at the other end of a telephone over there. And uh, we're sort of simulating a business transaction here, right, Jen? Tell me what we're, we're doing. What we're doing is confirming an oral purchase order. We've, um, I've sent the gentleman who uh, verbally ordered something to me. Well, now we're getting it sent, and uh, it will be sent back to me. Okay, so again, Sarah over there is signing that purchase order, and she's going to fax that back to our machine over here. That's correct. It will be, even though we're in the middle of WordPerfect, as you can see, it will be stored automatically and saved to disk. Uh, while you can't use WordPerfect, while you're in the pro uh, while a fax is being received, you can uh, check the file and uh, view the file from WordPerfect. Uh -huh. so oh, do you have options as far as printing the documents out then? Yes, you can, you can print to most laser printers and most dot matrix printers. Mm -hmm. uh, anything that has dot addressable graphics can be used. Okay, and what about the scanning process? Uh, obviously this doesn't include the scanner <laughs> at that price. Well, the, we're compatible with uh, many scanners. We're compatible with Hewlett Packard, Chinon, and Princeton Graphics, as well as a few others. Uh, you don't really need a scanner for most, most transmissions. Basically what you need uh, is what you're inputting into the computer through your word processor. Mm -hmm. and okay, so, so you were in the middle of WordPerfect again. Mm -hmm. It automatically interrupted and told you that it's receiving a facsimile now. That's right. And then, okay, I guess it'll take about how long again for that page to Less than a minute to be received from the, uh, from the facsimile. Now, can you be doing any work while, you're, uh, while the transmission's going on? No, right now the machine is locked up and dedicated to the fax. We've got a, a, a 9600 baud board with a, with a microprocessor that would allow background operation. That will be out uh, very shortly. Okay, okay. The, and so it's complete? It's now complete, and the program is restored. As you can see, there's no loss of data. You're back in okay, WordPerfect. So suppose we want to take a look at the document we just got. Okay. We go to the transaction log, and we just received RECV0032. Uh -huh. it's, uh, so we gave it a file name. That's correct. And now we hit F3. And there it is. And I'm lucky today, <laughs> <laughs> as demonstrations go. Okay. And as we see it, it comes in really as a graphic, not as a as, as a as a text as, yeah. a, as a text file. That's correct. And here's here's my signature, which um, we can go into in a few seconds and show that uh -huh. was attached, and also the signature of the recipient. That's uh, great. Okay, we're out of time. Jen, thank you very much. Thanks for joining us. We're for our look at add-on boards. Hope we'll see you here next week on the Computer Chronicles. In the random access file this week, now that Apple has hiked prices on the Macintosh, 
It's followed up with the introduction of two new Apple II products. The company announced a new Apple II C Plus featuring a CPU four times faster than the original, a three and a half inch internal drive with five times the capacity of the old one, an internal power supply, and space for an internal modem. Apple also released a new operating system for the Apple II GS called GS OS. It's a 16-bit system that lets the II GS run a lot faster. It will also enable the II GS to handle large files, including those using the High Sierra system for CD-ROMs. Apple also formally unveiled the new Mac 2X with the ability to access MS-DOS and OS2 files, as well as Apple ProDOS files. And there are rumors that this is just the beginning with announcements expected of a new low-end Macintosh, a new laptop Mac, and a new SE using the 68030 chip. The bus war continued to heat up last week with major hardware companies announcing their support for the new EISA standard. Jumping on the bandwagon were Acer, AT&T, DEC, K-Pro, Unisys, and Wang. Meanwhile, IBM played it cool, hinting at some new boards that will finally take advantage of the MCA bus, and Big Blue also announced, as predicted, a new PS2 Model 30 using the 8286 chip and the old AT-style bus. And who is IBM in bed with these days? Well, none other than its old nemesis, Steve Jobs. IBM has reportedly struck a deal with Jobs for the right to use the new user interface from the next computer, due to be announced in about a week. The rumors are growing about what that next computer will have in it. The latest leak says look for an integrated fax modem, an erasable CD drive, and TV quality video. Several new product announcements came out of the recent Seabold conference on desktop publishing. Adobe announced a PC version of Illustrator. Aldous showed a major upgrade of freehand. Cricket released Cricket Presents 2.0. Letraset showed off a new version of Ready, Set, Go. And Quark announced Quark Style a set of templates for users who don't want to have to worry about creating fonts, logos, etc. Ultra Network Technologies has announced a new network product called Ultra, which it says is 100 times faster than Ethernet. Execs say the Ultranet can move 1 billion bits per second. Finally, Computer World has announced the results of its computer productivity study listing the top 100 most efficient users of computer technology. Not surprisingly, there was no direct correlation between how much money you spend and how effective your system is. The big winners were utilities who placed four companies in the top ten, banks were in the middle, and retailers did the worst. General Motors, which spent nearly three billion dollars on information systems last year, came in only 96th, and oil giants Mobil and Exxon didn't even make it to the top 100. That's it for this week's Chronicles. We'll see you next time. The Computer Chronicles is made possible in part by CompuServe, featuring an online reference library, Wall Street reports, at-home shopping, airline reservations, games, and hundreds of other services. CompuServe, helping people get the most from computers. Additional funding is provided by McGraw-Hill, publishers of Byte. Byte's detailed technical articles on new hardware, software, and languages cover developments in computer technology worldwide. For a transcript of this week's Computer Chronicles, send $3 to PTV Publications, Post Office Box 701, Kent, Ohio, 44240. Please indicate program date.